Today we celebrate the awarding of an honorary degree to an individual whose life is an inspiration to all of us. Brother Richard. The ancient apocalyptic scourges of poverty, ignorance, sickness, and violence still assault the dignity of our human family in far too many places on earth, causing widespread suffering and degradation of body, mind, and spirit. One of these places is the small island nation of Haiti, a country which in recent years has been tragically ravaged by natural disasters, war, famine, violence, and death. The Haitian people have suffered in ways that we Americans have never experienced and can hardly imagine. Yet, from the depths of their suffering, from the depths of their tragedy, the Haitian people have found hope in the love, selfless generosity, and faith of some very special people. With the help of God and these special people, Haitians have fought valiantly against the temptation to despair and have found the faith and the resilience to rise above their tragedy and their suffering and to bring building anew for themselves, their children, a brighter, more hope-filled future. One of these very special people is Father Richard Frischat, who has worked among us and for the poor in Haiti for more than 25 years. Father Rick has spent 33 years as a passionist priest fulfilling this mission, proclaiming God's love and serving God's suffering poor. He first served in Mexico and Honduras where he established orphanages and cared for thousands of children. Then in, a, in Haiti, a country where the average life expectancy is 48 years, where 80% of the population subsist below the poverty line on less than $2 a day, and where he has lived and worked for a quarter century. Realizing that much of the work he had to do required medical knowledge, he came back to the United States in 1994 to earn a medical degree. Then, as a newly minted physician, he returned to Haiti to build and direct that country's most advanced pediatric medical facility, St. Damien's Hospital, which each year provides long-term care for hundreds of critically ill children and outpatient services for more than 20,000 children and adults. The January 2010 earthquake and the subsequent cholera epidemic significantly increased the work of Father Rick and his passionist mission in Haiti. Father Rick, those who labor side by side with you tell us you do not flinch from hard, exhausting, back-breaking work. They say you are tireless and unremitting in your compassion for the poor and in your passion to serve the poor. They tell us they don't know how or where you get your energy, your contagious cheerfulness, your patience, your loving kindness. Father Rick, you help bring God's light into our lives. You help make grace present in our world. In your life as priest and physician, you teach us in a vital and an immediate way the ancient level of the gospel, that by faith and love we shall enter the kingdom of heaven. You are an inspiration to us, a model of faith, love, selfless generosity, and commitment whose life exemplifies the Catholic Benedictine gospel values that we try to teach and seek to live here at St. Vincent. It is with great joy and gratitude that in the name of the faculty of St. Vincent College, 
I recognize you for the wonderful work that you have done and continue to do for God's poor, and I confer upon you, Father Richard Frischette, the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa at St. Vincent this 12th day of May, 2012. Thank you, Thank you so much. Now we're gonna And begin to speak. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Hello to the class of 2012, even those of you hidden under those bright lights over there. Congratulations, you're nearly at the end. In just a few minutes, if I make this short, and in a good few hours, if I go on too long. But you're nearly there. Congratulations also to your families, and as Archabbot Douglas said, we have special honor for all you moms and our moms who have gone before us. We're so grateful for our moms in our life, and we're so glad that this commencement exercise is taking place on the weekend of Mother's Day. Today is a new beginning for you, and we're going to have one very last class before you leave. No exam, no grades to worry about. It's really a little class about the new school which you're about to enter, which is the School of Life, and if you get really good at it, the name changes to the School of Hard Knocks. I hope you'll see the importance of striving to have a double major in the world in which you are about to enter. First and foremost, a major in faith, and secondly, a major in deep humanity. Deep inside of you, deep inside of me, there is a journey that's being traced. It's a journey. It's like a dance with many partners. You, God, the deep molding that life does on you, the wonderful mystery of goodness, the insidious presence of evil, all partners in this one dance. And the movement of this dance brings choices to you. And your ongoing choices will shape your destiny. Your life story has deep dimensions, alternating between comedy and tragedy. Tragedy in the sense of critical suffering. We get sidewalled in life. And that suffering brings a lot of dangers with it. But comedy in the sense of the ability to heal, to resolve, to unify, to integrate. In other words, the opportunities that suffering brings to us. The comedy parts are easy to take. They fill us with hope, with courage, with dreams, and with song. And they speak joyously of the presence of our provident God. But tragedy devastates us. It makes us confused and cynical. Some of us never get up again after being sidewalled by it. Tragedy can turn harmonious song into discordant lament and mocks that God has abandoned us. The real art of living with faith is about how to deal with the tragedy of life. If we manage this wrong, tragedy will inside of us 
seed self-disdain and blame. False voices within us will lead us to deny what we know, what we feel, what we are. And this inner betrayal leads to a dulling and destructive behavior, destroying ourselves through drink, through gamble, through terrible kinds of risk taking, and destroying all the good that might be real in us, making us, although still alive, still born to the vibrancy and vitality that could mark our lives. Lost in darkness, toxic to ourselves and to those around us, unable to see any other light, not even knowing that we are in the dark, we become victims and servants of a culture of death spawned by the denial of God. Our rich and very practical Catholic tradition reinforced for you here at the illustrious St. Vincent College community offers much support for you in the journey that you're about to undertake. Our tradition offers medicines and bombs, nourishment for our soul, as we walk through a world that deliberately tries to uproot and deny the soul, a world that sees you more and more as basically a cost center, a world which will devalue you fast and devalue you even unto death if your productivity and economic value declines, if you don't literally measure up against the gold standard of money and power. In the developed world, we are weakened by our trance with technology, by our fascination with so many material things and the illusions that they generate. We have abandoned our spiritual powers the art of living faith that is our heritage. We have abandoned these powers in favor of those that count, measure, weigh, stock, and dominate, and place a cash value even on tragedy. As consumers ever consuming, we are also ever digesting, half asleep, Lifeblood shifted from our brains and our hearts to our guts to digest. Tired, sleepy, we lay down and watch someone else live false lives on TV and in the movies. Long have we forgotten how to quiet our mind, how to still our heart, how to silence the endless images and sounds that swarm us so that we can heal ourselves and be healed by the Lord of the soul who shares with us the power of the resurrection from the deepest realms of our being. Ironically, in our developed countries of plenty, there seems to be much more a tendency to get lost in this inner darkness. Having everything we need, we want even more, and in fact accumulate only an inner emptiness that leads to boredom with life, dysfunctional families, social disorders, including high prevalence of suicide, even among the very young, and widespread addiction and depression. And yet, ironically, for the people in countries of great poverty, there seems to be a remarkable gusto, a love of life, a determination to work through every problem, tragedy, and sadness, to strive for fullness of inner life, inner and outer life, 
even in the face of abject poverty that seems insurmountable. This doesn't make at all poverty a good to be sought. It only highlights our Lord's wise words when he spoke of how difficult it is for the jaded and the satisfied to enter into the kingdom of heaven. In Haiti, where I have worked for 25 years, I can attest to you the great witness the Haitian people give to the strength and the power of the human spirit. Imagine a people that has suffered relentless tragedy for centuries, violence, ignorance, sickness, poverty, slavery, brutal repression, and in recent years, two enormous twin tragedies, earthquake and cholera. During those terrible days after the earthquake, driving around the city of Port-au-Prince, mostly at night when we were finished with our day's work, bringing relief, relief supplies throughout the city, a city of rubble which had fallen on the very heads of the poor, leaving them without home. And because of the massive numbers of dead, 300,000, leaving them without wives or husbands, child children or friends, leaving many without limbs. And yet those drives through the city at night gave witness to a marvel songs in the night. Imagine a broken, battered people singing by the thousands, by the tens of thousands, melodious laments that can only be born of faith, rich hymns begging for help and final victory from God that can only be born of hope, tender songs of praise of God that can only be born of love. The people have shown the whole world time and time again, a world which is so enamored of its material things and is so afraid to be without them. The people have shown us time and time again that when you have lost everything, but faith, hope, and love, you have everything. Just three weeks ago in Port-au-Prince, a young man came to see me with injuries that keep him twisted and limping. His name is Lucian. Over two years ago, when the earthquake struck, Lucian was downtown in a very humble rented room that his brother was living in, and the two of them were playing cards after school. An old and very tall hotel right next to them tumbled during the quake, fell on the lodging, and crushed them. For three days, Lucian lay trapped and crushed next to his dead brother. Weak and listless, when the rescue workers finally broke, broke through on the third day, both Lucian and his brother were taken for dead, and they were thrown on top of the mile-long boulevard piled with corpses near the fallen General Hospital. Unable to speak for weakness, unable to signal for help, too weak to gesture, unable to stand or walk because of the multiple fractures in his legs. As the bulldozers and backhoes approach the mass of the dead in order to deliver them to massive common graves, Lucien realized that if he did not act, he would be buried alive with his brother and with multitudes of his Haitian brothers and sisters. 
with an equally massive desire to live, he kicked up his multi-fractured leg into the air. He caught the attention of the heavy equipment operators. He was pulled from the piles of the dead and dragged by them to the tents of the half-dead, the tents of the Red Cross workers. And when he had casts and medicine and nourishment, he fled Port-au-Prince for two years to hide, to grieve, and to pray. And just now, does Lucian have the courage to come back, to risk another building falling on him, to face the destroyed street where he was so tragically wounded and his brother was killed, in order to try to heal himself more fully, in order to aim by deep instinct toward fullness of life again. This is the deepest possible appreciation of the gift of life, the deepest possible witness of the desire to live in spite of unbelievable tragedy. What art of living, what art of faith do the Haitian people know that they can teach us? By what power did the overwhelming tragedy of Lucian's life exponentially multiply his love for life and his willingness to fight for it against all odds. The art is not a secret, it's just refused by our world. The power is not unknown, it is just ridiculed, unwelcomed, and denied to our great peril. It is the secret that by God's grace, we can become perfected rather than destroyed by suffering. It is the power of the risen Christ present in any heart that will make room for him. It is the deep inner faith that bends the floodwaters of tragedy into life-giving rivers of life. It is what can make any ordinary person great and heroic. It is what can help us get up over and over again, stronger and more determined when we are devastated by the tragedies of life. It is the resurrection, the hidden power of your soul and mine, gift of the risen Lord. As graduates of St. Vincent's College and beneficiaries of the ancient Benedictine tradition, let your now brilliant, sharp, and well-trained minds be at the service of these truths. Do not seek truth only with your mind, but also with your inner heart and your deep gut. Your heart and your gut speak truths, listen to them. They will correct the errors of the mind. They will never allow you to rationalize God or values or any good thing out of your life and out of society. The Holy Word, the sacraments which bestow grace upon us, the advice and prayers of good people throughout the ages, our own good friendships, all of these will sustain us inwardly in tragedy and help us to be perfected by it. Our goal is not to retreat from the world, but to the contrary, to enter the world fully prepared the world which teems with its own comedies and tragedies, 
the world which is full of its own false voices and lures to destruction, but the world which is valuable to God who created it and which offer all, also offers true lights, the world of which Christ's will is that not even one person will be lost. The world which itself is, as St. Paul says, aching and groaning for salvation. You march into this world today and the world needs you badly. With the power from your heart and the power from your faith, you will beat swords into plowshares. You will beat spears into pruning hooks. You will bring hope where there is despair, light where there is darkness. You will drive out darkness with light and with truth and with the light of your love and kindled by God's grace, you will work tirelessly with many of us to rid the world of injustice, of degrading poverty, and of war. So you thought you were done in just a few minutes, but in fact, you're just beginning. Let the young graduates of 2012 from colleges and universities all across the world unite in this great task of bringing light to a dark world. Rise up to this great task, you graduates of St. Vincent's College. May you be bright stars in a dark sky, and may over the years your individual lights gather together into one great light, a light of a new dawn, ushering in a deeply human day where God's gospel of life prevails and where God is glorified forever. Congratulations, much courage, God's blessing on you, the class of 2012, St. Vincent's College.